Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I am Vin, and this is the monthly wrap up for April of 2022. So, April, I think, was an excellent reading month. Um, I got through, uh, I think, a good number of books, but also a lot of really good books. Um, I'm not going to go through any of these in large detail. All of these I have talked about more specifically in previous videos, uh, either videos dedicated specifically to that book or in a series that I call Fresh Red Kills, where I talk about the books that I had just finished. This is just a general summary wrap up. Um, so we're going to go through this hopefully quickly. Um, the first thing that I finished reading, because these are the books that I finished reading in April. Um, first one is James Clavell's Shogun, uh, part of his Asian series. I had read this as a um, March Mammoth, for March of the Mammoths, in a group read. So I read most of it in March, but then I finished it up the first week in April. And um, this is a historical fiction, takes place in 1600. A, an English sailor named John Blackthorne uh, washes up ashore uh, on Japan. And basically we have a, a major fish out of water, um, first half. Uh, where he's trying to learn the Japanese way and how different they are. And then the second half, we start seeing more of the Japanese intrigue, more Japanese characters coming to the forefront. And we are, you know, getting ever closer to the epic battle, historically, you know, real battle of Sekigahara, uh, which essentially um, allowed the Tokugawa uh, dynasty to be established. Um, and I thought that Clavel did an, an awesome job with characterization. Uh, many of the action scenes were really well done. Um, the kind of culture shock moments, I think, were also really done. If at times, you know, you kind of want to just take it with a grain of salt. Um, you know, I, I really, really like this. I did talk about my video. I did find that the end was unsatisfying. Um, it is it's not the ending that I thought that this book deserved. <laughs> Let me just say that. So, uh, really terrific. That last part, I didn't hate, but it kind of left me a little bit uh, at the end. Um, again, I talk about that a little bit more in the video that I made for this. Um, I had also read, um, and I uh, had originally wanted to read this in March, for middle grade March, um, but got to it uh, finally in April, and that is Johnny Tremaine by Esther Forbes, um, published in 1943, her historical fiction, uh, about the uh, revolution beginning in Boston through the eyes of a teenager, Johnny Tremaine. Uh, we see the Boston Tea Party occur in here. Um, we see uh, at least the aftermath of the battles of Lexington and Concord. And I was actually really impressed by this. I wasn't sure of, you know, 1943, exactly how it was going to, how it was going to be written. Um, I think it holds up very well. I thought the history uh, was done pretty well. Uh, it really gives you a sense of the time, um, of the people. Uh, yeah, th there were things in here that I was surprised that she included, such as slavery in Boston. Um, you know, slavery isn't always addressed very well uh, in in history from the 1940s. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was I was actually quite impressed by it. Um, and I'm glad that it wasn't glorifying of war, really. I mean, it did deal with the realities of how horrible war could be. Um, so, yeah, I was very impressed by this. I would gladly recommend this to uh, my students, um, pass, you know, encourage my son to read it when he's a little bit older. Uh, and it's one that, who knows, maybe I'll go back to again. Now, this also made me think of another book, Robinson Crusoe by uh, Daniel Defoe, because in Johnny Tremaine, the character mentions how he read this when he was younger, and then he finds a private library where he reads it again. And I realized I have not read this yet, but I have a copy of it sitting on my shelf. So I went ahead and read this, um, published in the early 1700s, a contender at least for some people for the first real English novel. And um, parts of it actually hold up pretty well. Um, I think that Daniel Defoe actually has a pretty good writing style. Uh, I liked his writing style a lot. Um, there were some moments of tension, uh, some really great scenes uh, throughout this. I think that Robinson Crusoe himself is maybe the thing that has not aged as well. Um, I found it to be fairly selfish. Uh, you know, he, he gets himself into a lot of trouble. I don't think he always necessarily learns from his mistakes. Um, and he does approach things, whether it's an object, an animal, or a person, um, 
really in asking the question, what can they do for me? Um, you know, it, what use are they of to me? Uh, there isn't much altruism throughout here, um, despite his another part of the novel being his uh, religious awakening. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I thought that this this held up pretty well. Um, there were some parts where it was very long passages of I went there, I found these animals, I killed them. Um, there's also other things like, you know, uh, him taking so long to try and create like a wooden shovel. Uh, you know, his, so we see some ingenuity, um, as well, but I did, I did enjoy this one overall. Um, I had read Mall Flanders before, which I think I did like better, but I do now really want to check out, uh, was it Journal of the Plague Year? Um, so yeah, I, I'm not done with Defoe. Um, I like him overall. And then, uh, I got into a subject that I really like, uh, that I've always had a love for, a fascination with, and that's Vikings. Uh, so April is also another booktube event that happens each year, and that is Saga Long, where booktubers read Icelandic sagas. Uh, last year, everybody read Njal Saga, and this year it was Egil Saga, and I like this quite a bit. Um, you know, this Egil is a a real Viking. Uh, he, well, he was a real person, but what I mean is he was brutal. Uh, he was savage, but he was also a poet, um, so there's poetry throughout here. Shows a very different, more sensitive, more thoughtful side to Egil as well. Uh, we have kind of a thoroughly pagan world in which Egil is moving through, uh, coming up against kings, uh, doing all kinds of battle. And um, yeah, uh, I talked about this more at length in the video that I made for this, uh, this and the next book. Um, but I really like this. I love these sagas. Um, definitely um, a part of world literature that I think needs to be appreciated more and read more. Absolutely. And then, uh, I, mean, I think my, my favorite book of the month um, would have to be this, uh, Children of Ash and Elm, A History of the Vikings by Neil Price. Um, came out, what, maybe maybe two years ago now? Um, but I just thought this was an excellent, uh, excellent history of the Vikings. Absolutely accessible to new readers, novices, you know, amateurs. Uh, but he doesn't talk down to the reader at all. He does a terrific job of establishing the Vikings or Norse, however you want to say it, um, in terms that they would, you know, that I think they could understand themselves. I, I don't think I'm saying that quite right. But what he really wants to say here or show here is how the Vikings thought of themselves, not necessarily how other people thought of them. And he does a terrific job establishing the world in which they lived, their religion, their social customs, their clothing, their objects. Um, and then branching out into their conquests, and then finally uh, how they really affected huge, huge parts of the world and expanded. Um, all the while, he is um, never forgetting to, uh, to remind us of how absolutely brutal the Vikings could be. And they could truly be beautiful, brutal. Uh, but at the same time, they could be impressive and elegant and, uh, you know, truly awe-inspiring. Um, and we get all of that uh, in here as well. So I really, really like this. And the last thing that I read in April, uh, a very short work. This is a kind of a quick graphic novel biography of the silent film actor Lon Chaney. So this is Lon Chaney Speaks by Pat Dorian. Um, Lon Chaney, somebody who was, uh, you know, a pioneer and uh, an icon in the horror film genre who died, you know, uh, way before his time, just as talkies were uh, were uh, becoming popular. And uh, this is a cartoon biography, basically, graphic novel um, by his cartoonist, showing Lon Chaney's life, uh, spotlighting and highlighting certain moments, certain films, a lot of John, Lon Chaney's life is a mystery, so Dorian only has so much to work with, uh, and that is understandable. Uh, one of the things I said in my video about this, I did like it, but it did feel like it was kind of maybe ideally suited for younger readers. Um, but that's not a knock against it, that's just, you know, as far as uh, content, the way it was presented, and the uh, dialogue. It just felt like it was for younger people, um, and that's perfectly fine too. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, I think I had a pretty good reading month. Um, I really enjoyed it. And um, let's see if I can actually create a stack here really quickly. 
camera might be shaking a little bit because I'm doing this on the table, but um, I was very happy with this month. So we have got Shogun, Lon Chaney Speaks, Children of Ash and Elm, Robinson Crusoe, Nagel Saga, Saga, and uh, Johnny Tremaine. Um, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Uh, but as always, thank you, BookTube.